I want to talk about planter downforce for a minute, just because I think it's interesting. So this planter has hydraulic downforce, which means I've got a hydraulic cylinder on every row, so every row can act individually and keep the planter at the depth I want it to for seeding. So if we look at the map on the iPad and you can kind of look at the legend on the right hand side, you can see it's using a lot of downforce and we're about to cross an area where we tilled over a drainage tile main we just put in. So you'll see on the map there, see it kind of lightens up because we've tilled and lightened up quite a bit right there. So that's nice and soft and loose. Uh, No-till is going to be a little firmer. Uh, the other thing is the row cleaners. So we've got cab adjustable row cleaners. So I'm running like uh, just under 20 PSI of down pressure on them. So that keeps them down. They float, but keep them pushed down. And I can switch them over to just full float, no pressure on them, or I can go to lift. So the hydraulic downforce has to counteract that because when I put down pressure on them, that's wanting to lift the row units up out of the field. So if we watch the map, if I put these into float, it takes them a minute to, to air down. You see I'm starting to lighten up a little bit. Some of that might be a little soil type change. Now if I go and, and lift them, see how it's lightening up? That's because the planter is not having to work against the row cleaners anymore. But of course I'm not cleaning corn stalks out of the way of the, the corn I'm planting right now. So I do want the row cleaners to have a little bit of down pressure on them. So we'll do that. So what will be interesting here, I probably won't quite catch it on the next pass. So I said we had that tile main in. Well, on this side of the field, all we did was the main and tilled that down and leveled it out. On this side, we've tilled the whole field where all the laterals are running into the main. This part isn't tiled. We'll probably do that this fall. So we'll see how the downforce changes when we do that. Get the down pressure back on. I find it works a little better if you set them in float, let the compressor get back up to pressure and then switch from up to down or however you want to do it. So when we turn around and get in this next pass, see on the left is where I was no-tilling and right ahead of me. But over here is where we put the tile in. So the soil finisher covered that 47 or so acres yesterday. So the planter is going to straddle that on the next pass. And you can kind of see it went through a little bit of the finisher there and lightened up. Okay, so now we're, we're still in a little bit of no-till. When we get to the corner of that grass there, we're going to shift into the cultivated part of the field where we ran the tile, you're going to see things change. So I'm actually going to pick my row cleaners up or at least float them because I don't want to plow a big trench and heap things up between the rows. So let's see. And we've got uh, like three rows still out in the no-till. So you can see it's lightened up already and I haven't changed the row cleaners. So let's get those into float and see what happens here. So yeah, you can see we're lightening up a whole lot because the planter mostly only needs its own weight to plant the depth I want. It doesn't have to counteract anything now. So yeah, so now it's really, really lightened up there. Um, on the outside, it's run, running a little more there. It's starting to lighten up. And you can see the few rows to my inside pass are still running heavy because they're out in that no-till they're not in all this fluffed up stuff from the soil finisher and sometimes you'll even see uh tracks from a vehicle driving around uh even a pickup truck or something that uh, reacts like uh, every half a second or something like that so it's not like perfectly in a track but over the field it does a really good job and what i like is it's dynamic it's changing all the time so what we used to have was a static airbag down pressure or um, you go a step before that you would have had um, just springs or just weight so every row is changing now all the time and when we're doing no-till and cover crops and like today I'm getting into some tillage 
between the downforce and the adjustable row cleaners, in seconds the planter is ready for a different situation. That's what I really like about it. Now there, there's some different row cleaners. Um, we just have pretty standard floating row cleaners with a pneumatic cylinder on them, which I change here. Um, there's some pretty fancy ones like uh, Dawn has. So these are mounted as most row cleaners are to the row unit. Uh, I know Dawn has one that actually uses like a U-bolt, I think, that goes around the planter frame instead of the row unit. And it's like a trailing arm system. So the row cleaner is not working against the row unit and you can get those in hydraulic control. Now you look at the map, I'm fully in the tilled area. So it's a lot more colorful map now. And I've got my row cleaners lifted. All I want them doing is kind of tickling the ground and knocking the clouds and stuff out of the way. I don't need them to move any trash since we've turned all that under. And you can see I've changed the, the legend. There's wiped down on it anyway. We're getting into really light, the like no downforce in some places. Um, not sure, it maybe hasn't quite got it into lifting. It can actually lift with this system and take weight off of the row unit. Now this planter is central fill where our old planter had three bushel boxes. So now a lot of our seat weights over the center of the planter but when we had three bushel boxes on the other one, especially when we load all of them up with three bushels of beans in each row, um, maybe I can find some old maps. It would switch from downforce when it was almost empty to lifting from one pass to the next because, you know, we had 150 pounds of seed in every row. So that's, that's quite a bit of weight there. So now we're going to switch. I'm going to get off of this tilt part as I go around the corner here. Try not to hit this little T-post on the side. Missed it. Get up next to the guy's yard. So now we're going to be back in a no-till situation. And I'll just leave my row cleaners up because it's not that far. So you can see it's, it's getting a little bit harder there, uh, especially behind the tractor. Um, I run this same path all the time. So with the row cleaners, lifted you can see the planter working to kind of do those pinch rows behind the I'm sorry the downforce working to handle those pinch rows uh, in the tractor chair. Come up to the end here. Order. Stop. So yeah even though it's the same same system um, between this planter with central fill and 1.6 bushel boxes versus just a regular planter with the three bushel boxes, which can be quite heavy, uh, the system reacts differently. A lot of times, till or no till on an end row like this, see, I'll, I'll lift my uh, row cleaners just so my turns are smoother. And actually, in tillage, if you leave them down, even at float, you'll get a pretty bumpy ride when you turn around. So that's kind of nice. Um, no till I'll float them on my end rows sometimes. And I'll have pretty smooth turns. Otherwise it can get pretty choppy. Some neighbor's cows are just watching me today. Sometimes they like to run over and pretend to be scared of the equipment. <laughs> 